Hi everyone. Welcome to this next session of Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. I'm an incoming medical intern going into radiology. Let's get started on our way to get that higher score on test day. So for this question, longer question you see here, but don't let that intimidate you. You're the strategic test taker here. You're gonna see questions like this and you're gonna be able to tackle them no matter how long they are. A 39-year-old African-American man, notice that's highlighted there that I put that in bold because ethnicity has an impact on a lot of these diagnoses that you're gonna see. Comes to the physician because of anorexia, malaise, which are pretty common present presentations for basically a lot of things going wrong. But what's not that common is when you have dark urine. That's why I bolded that. That should jump out to you guys. And he's got some upper abdominal discomfort. His temperature's high. He's got a fever. You gotta recognize that temperature and know what's normal from abnormal. This guy's got a fever. He's got dark urine. He's got these other symptoms. This guy's in trouble, okay? We gotta be able to help him out. Physical exam shows some scleral icterus, meaning what? We've got some yellowing, okay? We've got some yellowing of the eyes. You're thinking jaundice. You're thinking, hey, this dark urine, this icterus, probably something to do with the liver. Moderate right upper quadrant tenderness. Again, our liver in the upper right quadrant. So we're thinking probably the liver. The liver's palpable below the right costal margin. Lab studies show what? So they show us some things that should be familiar to you guys, thinking about hepatitis B. So we've got HBS antigen positive, HBS antibody negative, anti-HBC IgM positive, HBE antigen positive. So different types of serum markers, okay? Stuff you're gonna see common on test day to think about these serum markers. Which of the following will most likely change in his serologic findings when this patient enters the window period? So make sure you're reading these questions carefully on test day. It's not just how well you know hepatitis B or being able to say, oh yeah, I know what this guy got, but do you answer the question exactly what they want? So this question, the most likely change exactly when the patient enters the window period. Keep that in mind as you get to the answer choices now. Take a few moments, we're gonna go through these. Notice the only differences between these answer choices is it's saying what the patient will become. So HBC antigen positive, HBC IgG positive, HBE antigen negative, HBS antibody positive, HBS antigen negative. Take a few moments, think this over and pick what you think's the best answer. Okay, great. So. The correct answer for this is choice E, HBS antigen negative. So some key points about acute hepatitis B. So you get questions like this right all the time come test day. What's the window period? The window period is when neither the HBS antigen nor the HBS antibody can be detected. That defines the window period. Why does that happen? Why do these antigens go away? These antibodies aren't there yet? Because there's a precipitation of antigen-antibody complexes. What'll happen is, is these antigens bind to the antibodies and the blood is actually able to remove them during this window period. Okay, it's kind of a cool phenomenon. So serologic tests conducted during the window period, they will stay positive for HBC antibody and HBE antibody, but rarely are any antigens detected during that window period. So the biggest things to kind of take away from a question like this is this graph, which I'm sure that most of you have seen before, and if not, you're not gonna forget this graph from studying a question like this. Being able to understand, you see that window period in there, that window, notice that it specifically deals with the HBS antigen when it goes away, and the HBS antibody when it first is detected. Notice also that the jaundice and most symptoms go away before that window period happens, but then notice that some other things, they don't give a care if it's in the window period. So your antibody for HBC, your antibody for HBE, they stay during the window period. So study this graph, know this graph, be able to explain this graph to yourself or one of your friends. Questions like this, common appearance on test day, asking about window period antigens, antibodies for hepatitis B. Knowing this, doing a question like this with me, you just got yourself more points on test day. That's why you're here. That's why I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining me today for Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin, and I will see you guys next time.